According to psychologists, people who visit outer space and then look back at the Earth from far, far away begin to see things differently. They experience a perspective shift that changes their philosophy of life. This is what's known as the overview effect. But is it possible to experience the overview effect without going into space? Allow me to explain. Relative to the universe, the Earth is ridiculously small and fragile. It doesn't seem that way to us common dirt dwellers because we are currently trapped right here on top of it. From this perspective, the Earth seems to stretch off to infinity in every direction. Explorers of ancient times could scarcely imagine what lay beyond the horizon, let alone that one day we would have machines orbiting the entire globe, giving us pictures of the surface with resolutions of just a few meters, in order to help us drive to that new restaurant we wanted to try. When our species straps themselves to explosion-powered vehicles that propel them high enough to be able to see the planet hanging from nothing in a vast, empty blackness, something hits them an emotional, philosophical truth that we down here can scarcely tangle with. What the overview effect actually is, is two things. A big shift in awareness into a self-transcendent state, and an overwhelming feeling of awe. By a self-transcendent state, I mean that you no longer feel like just one person. Instead, you feel a sense of connectedness with the rest of humanity and with the universe. It's a state of transcendent consciousness where you realize that day-to-day -day problems don't matter because all of us are just hanging out on a chunk of rock that's hurtling through space. And by awe, I mean an overwhelming feeling of beauty and scale. The whole enormous, intricate, incredibly blue planet floating before you. Together, the self-transcendent state and awe are often a profound enough experience that the person changes the way that they think permanently similar to a religious experience or experiencing the birth of a child. The guy who coined the term overview effect is named Frank White, and he wrote a book where he interviewed astronauts about it. What did they have to say? You don't see the barriers of color and religion and politics that divide this world. You wonder, if you could get everyone in the world up there, wouldn't they have a different feeling? A new perspective? You can't return home without feeling that difference but you do come back to reality very quickly. You try to share and relate your feelings to others, but you can't take a billion people back with you. It is one of the deepest, most emotional experiences I have ever had. You see the sun against that black sky and realize it is just one of the stars. You have an appreciation for what we have here on Earth and for what may be possible out in the universe. It's like hearing a description of a rose garden and then actually going into a rose garden, saying, wow, this is a rose garden. I've also put some links to some YouTube videos featuring astronaut interviews in the YouTube description of this video. So what does science say about the overview effect? Well, when it comes to the self-transcendence aspect, Yadin et al. wrote in 2016 that self-transcendent experiences are associated with a reduction of brain activity in the part of your brain that is spatially aware. In other words, your brain stops processing as much information about the space of your own body and instead begins processing extra information about the environment around you. In the case of the overview effect, that would be the planet Earth, but there are other ways to trigger it. Yadin et al. wrote that a particularly striking visual stimulus, meditation, religious rituals, and the use of psychedelic drugs can all contribute to a similar state of mind. When it comes to the feeling of awe, researchers Chirico and Yadin wrote a chapter in a book in 2018 all about awe as an emotion. In order to trigger the emotion of awe, a person needs to experience vastness. That vastness can be either perceptual, like looking down from the top of a mountain and being overwhelmed by the viewable distance, or it can be conceptual, such as thinking about eternity or infinity. What these have in common is that they make a person feel very small. These experiences are often associated with other feelings, such as nearby danger. While experiencing awe, a person may feel as if they are close to danger and yet still safe, 
such as standing at the rim of the Grand Canyon and looking down. Awe changes your behavior to be friendlier towards society. Chirico and Yadin list some of these effects, such as decreased aggression and increased altruism, such as helping other people who are in need. The features of awe as an emotion have led to an evolutionary theory as to why this emotion exists. The idea, as outlined by Chirico and Yadin, is that awe may have been first a response to surprisingly safe shelters that allowed for a good vantage of potential approaching enemies, thus creating an ideal context for prosocial behaviors to take place. So when we combine strong experiences of vastness, fear, beauty, and connectedness, we get awe and self-transcendence. What can then happen is a long-term change in a person's attitudes towards others, usually described as a very positive prosocial change. In other words, people who experience the overview effect often want to dedicate more time to helping others when they return to Earth, as well as more passion for things in general. If this is such a wonderful feeling, then shouldn't we all try to experience the overview effect? If all it takes is a certain visual experience, then couldn't we simulate that down here on the Earth? Several research groups have tried this recently. In 2017, Chirico et al. demonstrated that using immersive videos of beautiful nature scenes in a head-mounted display, such as you might use in a virtual reality video game, can create some emotional reactions of awe. This was measured by changes to breathing, heartbeat, and skin conductance, as well as simply asking the person how they were feeling. In a follow-up study from 2018, Chirico et al. included an immersive video of the view of Earth from space, and were also able to induce feelings of awe. They concluded that awe can be elicited at high intensity, even in the lab. Then, in 2019, a paper was published by Stepanova, Kesnel, and Rika that attempted to create a virtual overview effect journey. In the virtual journey, the participants navigated through a forest, a lake, and outer space. The journey took about an hour, and it incorporated the things that we have talked about so far, including using a scary but safe fear reaction. They did this by having the participants virtually jump into a very deep lake. They interviewed the participants afterwards to see if they succeeded in creating an overview effect. They found that some of their participants did report feelings of interconnectedness and vastness. Of the 13 participants that completed the journey, many reported some encouraging emotional responses, and one seemed to experience something that was very similar to the overview effect. That one participant came away from the experiment discussing how viewing Earth from space made them think about how close countries are located to one another, and how the artificial lines that we have between groups of people are unhelpful for society. In the end, they concluded that their journey showed promising results supporting the premise that VR installations can elicit authentic emotional experiences and induce minor cognitive shifts. More work is needed to understand everything that we've talked about today. But maybe someday soon, you too will be able to go on a virtual journey to change the way that you see the world forever. Thank you for watching this episode of Art Explains. Leave a comment telling me what you thought of this episode, and I'll see you next time. Actually, you'll see me next time. This is, this is a video.